sentire la sua montagna oh bella ciao bella ciao bella ciao 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 se venire la sua montagna sotto l'ombra di un bel fiore in today's episode of what is titoism we're going to be discussing the economic aspects of titoism This won't be discussing issues that Yugoslavia had with loans or the oil crisis and the results as this is on the ideas of Titoism itself. I'll make a video eventually discussing some of the issues Yugoslavia had before its collapse. I will be going into the changes that Yugoslav economy of the 1970s, but first we'll start with the 1950s and worker self-management. Most workplaces were self-managed or co-ops in Yugoslavia. Us Titoists believe that the workers should have direct and self-control over their enterprises and jobs through co-ops and general democratized workplaces in order to have control of the means of production. I'll put a great lecture as a banner thing that discusses democracy in the workplace very well. To put it simply, unlike your current job if you're a worker, A management committee would be elected by your worker council and supervised by the council. The council is made up of all the workers who each gets one vote in all manners. If your place of work was small of around 4 or less usually or family run as in family members were working in it, then this might not be necessary. By 1970, companies and enterprises had formed through contracts of workplaces working together. This might be for instance a furniture factory might make a contract with a lumber mill and or a textile factory for materials and therefore create an enterprise or basic organization of associated labor. These would be managed by a worker council with their own and a director of the enterprise who could be dismissed by the worker council. But wait, I hear you ask. How does the capital be spread? Looking, Looking at, at you in particular, particular capitalists. Edward Cadeli believed profits of these enterprises and companies were based on investment of labor, by which the profits of the company and enterprises were distributed based upon the amount of work done or contributed. This would be decided by the worker councils. You might be concerned about monopolies and the possible dangers of capitalist competitiveness for profits. There is a quote by Tito on issues with the economy in June of 1957 to the Congress of Workers' Councils. It should not be forgotten that our socialist society is an enormous collective in which the interests of the individual must coincide with the interests of the whole community. It is very harmful for the community if instead of a real socialist relationship in the factories and undertakings, the principle of the stronger prevails. This loyal competition and the setting up of number of enterprises of the same sort merely for the sake of competition with already existing enterprises is exceedingly harmful because too much investment is absorbed which could be more usefully employed for other purposes. Another harmful practice is when certain enterprises refrain from any cooperation which might result in cheaper production of certain products and so on. These and similar shortcomings must be eliminated for it will be to the benefit of the workers themselves and the whole of the community. Healthcare, education and housing were controlled by the state to an extent as the healthcare and education system were democratized by its workers such as teachers, doctors and nurses. Healthcare and education were free along with the state providing housing for people and try to make sure it was close to their place of work. I'll go more into this in the next episode of what is Titoism and the society aspect. Now in agriculture, collectivization and state farms were initially used. However, Yugoslavia went down the path of co-ops. These co-ops were managed much like discussed with workplaces before. Another unique aspect of Yugoslavia compared to other communist states was how farmer households were present. Farmer households could own up to 10 hectares or 25 acres of land per person, and any larger farmland was owned by co-ops, agricultural companies, 
or local communities. This land could be sold, bought, or leased. A lot of this came from the anger from peasants and peasant uprisings. By 1950, Tito noted in the pamphlet, workers managed factories in Yugoslavia. We have carried out such a thorough agrarian reform that we have left a maximum of 25 hectares of land in the hands of the rich peasants. About 700,000 hectares were redistributed to the poor and landless peasants from the fund of the nationalized land, the big estates, and the land which has been taken from the rich peasants and the church on the basis of land reform. Within Titoism, there is of course debate about whether collectivization is a better path, but this is what the way agriculture was done to an extent in Yugoslavia. Personally, I agree with most of this, obviously being a Titoist, but I do have some of my own ideas and disagreements. Even though I didn't mention it in this video, I disagree with the taking of loans from both the US or even to some extent from the USSR because of the issues of paying them off, particularly. Lastly, I think it might be possible to remove the management committees or have them only truly have responsibility when an emergency happens. I'll conclude with a quote from Tito on Workers' Own Factories in Yugoslavia pamphlet in June of 1950. When the state took over the means of production, that still did not mean full fulfillment of the action slogan of the working class movement, the factories for the workers. The mottos, the factories for the workers and the land for the peasants are not abstract propaganda slogans, but mottos which have deep meaning. They contain the entire program of a socialist relations in the productions in regard to social ownership, in regard to the rights and duties of the working people. Therefore, they can be and they must be realized in practice if we are really to build socialism.